and welcome to the newest uh, Crazy Horse podcast and the first for 2014 and it's also quite a momentous occasion because it'll be uh, soon our uh, one year anniversary Yay! of the website. Woohoo! Liam's having a can of Carlin to celebrate. Yeah, he goes. <laughs> this is booze for the year. <sighs> Let's just hope I not fall asleep so, before the end. Yeah. So basically, we'll uh, after we've done the introductions, that's it. Liam will, will be gone. <laughs> I'm dozing now. <laughs> <laughs> He's either going to get a takeaway as well. Um, but, so anyway, let's get to the introductions. First of all, uh, to the left of me, I have Mike. Hello. Hello. And to the right of me, I have Liam. Hi, everybody. Hi, Doctor Nick. I was actually, funnily enough, going to do that. That was that was quite funny. Um, and as you know, uh, and Dave. Oh, Dave. Oh, right, Dave. Which is quite funny because obviously, well, not quite funny, but obviously, uh, Roger Lloyd Pack passed away today, unfortunately, uh, at the age of sixty-nine. Uh, so rest in peace, Roger. You know we're going to miss you, Trig. Anyway. So, how are you both? I'm very well. Not bad at yeah. all. It is all good. And yourself? Yeah, yeah, not a free bad time. Just, uh, just like I say, I've been busy uh, gaming and working and this, that, and the other. A little bit of wee, a little bit of wool, a little bit of whoosh. Yeah, uh, it's all good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, first of all, before we get on to the what we've been playing section, as we always do. Uh, I just want to give, uh, obviously, a few mentions. Uh, first of all, to Stefan Evans, a.k.a. Ruffle Copter Evo. I'll hand it over to Mike, as he will mention why I'm, I've mentioned his name. Yes. Congratulations to Stefan for winning the first ever Crazy Horse giveaway contest. Woo! A, 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 a fairly decent and random uh, match he won. Yeah, it was good. I mean, you know, obviously there was uh, quite a lot in there and uh, obviously the key prize being FIFA 14 for the uh, Atari Lynx. Yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> brilliant handheld FIFA must yes. play console. <laughs> yeah, enjoy your uh, 25 batteries getting past the loading screen, uh, the title screen, <laughs> Steph. Yeah, congratulations, mate. Uh, two and another one, obviously uh, one of our biggest fans, uh, Alan, aka Contract Two Killer. You know, uh, how are you doing, mate? Uh, great to uh, have you, you know, on board as a fan. Yes. Uh, much appreciated. Hello. Uh, sorry. I'm just saying hello to him. Hello. Uh, and to everyone else who gives us a listen, you know, thank you. We uh, appreciate your support. And uh, lastly. We will. Uh, I just want to give a mention to another one of our affiliates, uh, Destination Gamer, who we have mentioned in the past, obviously, as we have had Batch on uh, in the past as a guest, and we really enjoyed maybe having him on again in the future. Uh, they have released their first podcast this week, uh, him and Ziggy Mandias. Um, Ziggy's, you know, he's designed the crew logo for them. He's been very active on the site, and uh, yeah, him and Batch released their first podcast. You can go on to destinationgamer.co.uk or onto iTunes and leave them a, a really, really nice review uh, and download it. Uh, you know, and then there's a few others as well. I think SoundCloud and, and a few other ways to listen to them. Uh, I've had a listen this week, and it's it's really good. Um, you know, it's about an hour long. It's just decent length. Uh, quite informative, um, you know. So, so give give them a listen, and thanks to Ziggy for uh, giving us a shout out on the. You know, we really appreciate the support, mate. Cheers for watching our videos and listening to us, and uh, you know, maybe we'll have you on in the future as yeah, well. Definitely, uh, you know. So, yeah. So, uh, like I say, congrats, Steph. All right, everyone, uh, all our fans, and uh, give a uh, Destination Gamer a listen. Right, anyway, swiftly moving on to our podcast, because that's the uh, key thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why we're all here tonight. Uh, next, firstly, obviously, we'll go on to what has everyone been playing. Uh, firstly, what did everyone get for Christmas? What games did you all get? I've already seen Mike's list, but for those who hasn't. Uh, 
I ended up getting Killzone for the PS4. No, nice. Which I haven't started yet. Dead Rising 3 for the Xbox One. Which, again, I haven't started yet. Uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. A new headset and a Tetris lamp. Nice. Which awesome. Which uh, will tie us on to a new story about Tetris, which I mentioned before. But uh, we'll get on to that. Nice. What about you, Liam? Um, I got Killzone on PS4. And a TV stand, which I got like a month before Christmas. <clears throat> Pardon me. Oh, nice. So, uh, anything out of them that have really stood out for you both? What have you been enjoying out of your list? Uh, well, first of all, I'm really surprised with Assassin's Creed 4. Uh, as I'm sure people have heard before, I've mentioned that I wasn't really looking forward to number 4 and how in number 3 the ship combat was the least enjoyable part of the game for me, but I've really started enjoying it. Uh, you don't like the naval warfare? Not in Assassin's Creed 3, I didn't know. It was awful. <laughs> but oh, it was kind of a, a, a precursor to four, really. Yeah, and I can't get, a, I can't pull myself away from the naval warfare in number four. I absolutely love it. Mm. The plundering's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Mentioned boarding ships um, and taking down forts and yeah, superb. I've not taken down. I've not even faced the legendary ships yet. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. I, I don't even dare. Uh, what about you, Liam? Anything stood out for you out of the games you got for Christmas and what you've been playing? Mm, I'd have to say Battlefield 4. It's freaking awesome. Must have made. Even though it's not been working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it crashes every now and then, but it's, other than that, it's, it's brilliant, honestly. It's definitely the, the Call of Duty killer. It's quite a bold yeah, statement. I'm... Call of Duty's killed itself. Apparently. I was just about to say, I think at this point, Call of Duty's becoming the Call of Duty killer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, well, speaking of Call of Duty, they've, uh, the next DLC uh, for Ghost, they've got Michael Myers on board. Uh, so basically, I think they've done that for to finish. They've got him <laughs> on board to finish the job. Because, um, yeah, I have heard a lot of bad things about Ghosts. Uh, it's just. Supposedly the campaign is it's supposed to be quite enjoyable, but for Call of Duty standards, you know, um, it you know it just isn't apparently as it's supposed to be quite short. It's not as um, what's the word over the top and, and and explosive and well written like the past campaigns. I haven't had the chance to play it yet. Um, you know, and obviously I've not seen that many people on my friends list playing it. If I'm being honest, uh, even people on the Xbox One. Have said they've not been playing it. Uh, what are you enjoying most about Battlefield 4? Uh, I'd have to say the multiplayer. It's just so different to what I've played in the past. I mean, I've mentioned this to Mike a few times. There's one level where it's like a coastal type of game. So you've, you've got your helicopters, um, big airplanes, uh, boats, uh, trucks, everything. It's all in like a a beautiful sunsetting sort of thing. And then as time goes by, the island's been blown up, a big submarine crashes on the island, and it's pitch black and thundering and lightning. It's it's just so atmospheric. It's like a, a real war sort of thing. Nice. Have you just been playing the campaign? Uh, it happens in the campaign, but mostly online I've been playing. It's, it's just one thing where when you start it, you just can't put it down. Yeah. It has been. I mean, Battlefield Three was, you know, um, that was like huge. Like loads of people played it on my friends list, and I know obviously there's a few like Huxan and Banzi and uh, Demolition uh, Demolition Man and, and a few others. There's a quite a few of them who play it on the Xbox One. Um, you know, they've got quite like a, a quite a lot of like people getting together and playing it, uh, like they did with Three. Um, you know, do you, obviously, do you think that is kind of Battlefield has overtaken COD? Yeah, that definitely goes far to say that. I mean, Call of Duty, it's not really changed much as it has it since um, the fourth one. So, it's... the campaigns have always been good. Like I so said, I will give them credit for that. The single player campaign is excellent, um, and the zombies on on uh, uh, Treyarch. Uh, Call of Duty games are really enjoyable, but yeah, the multiplayer's, you know, mm. it, it needs freshening it, up. It does, yeah. Um, I mean, 
I mean, the battle, I've heard the Battlefield campaigns are short, um, you know, but obviously the strength lies in the multiplayer. Uh, is a campaign short? Is it, um, you know, for somebody who enjoys single player games more than multiplayer, would Battlefield be a waste of time for somebody? Or, or would, would it, is it a case of style over substance with Battlefield campaign? Uh, I reckon you'd enjoy it. It's, I'm about four hours in so far, and it's, it, it keeps throwing new things at me. I mean, there's plenty of vehicles to control. There's what you go from blowing up tanks to one minute you're in a building and it's collapsing around you and stuff like that. It's, it, it always throws something new at you, so you, it keeps it enjoyable. So Yeah, I definitely recommend it. Oh, nice. And what else have you been playing? I may, I may pick it up. Uh, what else have you been playing like, since the last, obviously, since we last spoke? On the podcast, um, mainly FIFA Ultimate Team. It's just so addictive. You're getting a bit of echo off you there, Liam. Me? I think it's you. I'm not getting any echo off anyone. Ah. Anyway, um, it's not affecting your side, is it, Mike? Or? Uh, not now. The echo seems to have gone. All ah, right, cool, cool. Yeah, so, uh, all right, yeah. Um, there is, I don't know if they've released it on the PS4, but this week on the Xbox One, you can download the FIFA 14 Ultimate Team of the Week. I think it's the Ultimate Team of the Week or Year or something. Uh, um, yeah, the strengths always are in the uh, in the Ultimate Team. Do you purchase a lot of packs online or do you just tend to unlock them yourself or, or use auctions and whatnot buying coins off the traders buying packs online um playing matches i've spent hundreds of thousands of coins i mean recently i've been trying to get the team of the season players i've just mm. got no one i've sold all my best players to buy these packs and just just ended up with hesky <laughs> I don't this Hesky. It's ridiculous, he honestly. God, it's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think you should mention him that you had a bit of a, a crisis of faith with FIFA 14 over the last couple oh, of weeks, haven't yeah. you? It's, you get, you know, like you've got your seasons. You have ten divisions. As soon as you get to those top divisions, everybody uses this tactic where they do a, a high through ball. Your defenders don't react to it, and they kind of just stand there, and they always go clean through. It's so I got to the point where I stuck it on eBay for about a day. I was that pissed off? So yeah, I don't know. Just freaking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about play. yourself, Marty? What have you been playing? Oh God, uh, a lot really. Um, well, obviously, I mean, I started Sleeping Dogs, well, I carried on Sleeping Dogs from where my last save was because it's in the games with gold, it was. Um, Assassin's finished Assassin's Creed 4 since the last podcast, um, and it's amazing, uh, DLC Freedom Cry, which you both have to play. It is unbelievable, definitely worth a buy. Um, but yeah. You have to, yeah. I would honestly, I would definitely recommend it. You play as Adewale, um, and you free, you're basically freeing slaves, um, you know, and and it's just unbelievable. The, you know, he's a great character. So, you know, the performance, his look, you know, everything about it is is superb. Definitely worth picking up. Um, I still not, I downloaded The Wolf Among Us. It was free over Christmas. Still not played that yet. Uh, FIFA 14 on the 360, uh, WWE 2K14, uh, Batman Arkham Origins, uh, the I'm just trying to think what else really. Um, Shoot Many Robots, which was in the games with gold. Um, God, what else? Uh, I did some connect with the misses uh, last night. Uh, the Walking Dead season two episode one finished that uh, when it came out. They are still uh, keeping up to their high standards with that as they were in oh, season one. Yeah, um, you know it kind of. I won't. I don't want to give away any spoilers or anything, but it kind of. As soon as the episode starts, about a few minutes in, it's like, my God, they've just they don't let up. It's like it, it hits you automatically. Um, 
you know, they just, they just like the, the, the emotion, they just basically are like, right, yeah, we're going to suck you right in again. And you just automatically like, you bastards. <laughs> it's, it's, it is, yeah, and, and it's brilliant, you know. It, Clementine, it obviously shows kind of how she's grown since losing Lee, um, you know, and things like that. And it, it you know, and, and, and it's, it's just, it definitely kind of leaves you on, on a bit of a, a cliffhanger, you know. Um, I'd like to say, I don't want to say anything about what, what decisions and things you have to make in it because you guys have got to play it. Um, but yeah, it definitely kind of leaves you wanting more. Uh, and there is a season pass which is available for eleven ninety nine, which is good because you, if you get it, you save. You're saving basically four pounds um, because it's three ninety nine an episode. Oh, awesome. and so yeah, I'd recommend that. Are you gonna give that a whirl soon? Uh, I think I will do. Yeah, I really enjoyed season one. Uh, oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, it's uh, it was it was just one of the most emotional games you know you could ever play. Really, it's just the writing was unbelievable. Um, which I'll get more onto Telltale as they've obviously revealed recently a few more franchises they're doing. Um, yeah, like I say, The Wolf Among Us, gotta play that. Keep hearing great things, and the second episode has finally been announced for the first week of February. Um, I was just thinking, really, that's you know, obviously, like I say, the main ones at the minute just focuses. I've got a huge backlog of games. Um, you know, I've got I just keep that's why I, I'm not getting an Xbox One. Um, so I'm focusing mainly at the minute on. Uh, the Batman Arkham Origins and WWE 2K14. And now you find it um, in the cases. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I'm sure. um, Batman. I am going to get the review up once I've finished it. Um, Batman's it 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 when it's good, it is very good. But when it's bad, it feels like a chore sometimes. It's like I don't know if you've played the other Batman games, yeah. the Arkham games. Um, it does, you know, there's moments where it's very clever, like the case files where you've got to kind of, um, you actually re- recreate the, uh, you use your detective mode to recreate the, um, the basically what's happened, like the incidents, like, I don't know, somebody's been run over and you've got to go all through the, um, I'm trying to think of the words. You've got to look at all the evidence and you've got to scan it and you've got to find out who's killed, you know, yada, yada, yada. And that, it kind of goes killed, all you know. CSI on them then. So. Yeah, it is. It's like that. You you go on to obviously where where it's happened and then sometimes you have to, have to climb up onto the roof and scan some blood or wherever. Um, that's really clever. But then it does at times feel like Arkham City 2.5, basically. It just feels like an add-on. Um, the combat... It's, it's you know it's still the same. Um, it's it's definitely worth checking out if you you know if you love the Batman games. Um, and Warner Brothers have done a very good job with it. Uh, Warner Brothers Montreal, the multiplayer. Um, it's you know it looks promising, and then you play it and you're like, actually no, it it's disappointing. Uh, it lacks at execution. It, it has so much potential. Um, WWE, yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's you know as, as Liam said, you know it kind of. It feels like the previous WWE games, but the 30 years of WrestleMania mode is excellent. Um, street mode is, is really difficult because uh, you've got to beat The Undertaker and it is it is, it is so hard. But um, yeah, other than that, um, you know, just those three and uh, yeah, it just kept basically just trying to focus on getting through a few at a time and then work on the backlog. Uh, what about yourself? Um, again, Assassin's Creed 4. Uh, I haven't finished that one yet, but I'm not far from the end. I finished off Lego Star Wars. Uh, Lego Marvel, sorry. Oh, good man. Uh, brilliant game, really enjoyed that. Yeah. I've been playing a fair bit of Lunar Panda, which we've covered a fair bit of on the site. Yeah, and you've even got the logo. Yeah. And obviously now with uh, with an affiliate that I sent with them, and I'd also like mm. to... While I'm on the subject, I'd like to thank Adrian Killens, the guy, one of the guys behind Luna Panda, for doing the new intro to the podcast, which none of you have heard yet because it hasn't gone up. But <laughs> you will have, or should I say, our listeners will have heard it at the beginning of this. So I want to thank him for that for us. He uh, took the time to give us a, a pretty awesome permanent intro for the podcast, so we're not ripping off somebody else's music now. 
Uh, trying to think what else I've been on. I don't. Did I? I can't remember if I'd finished Grand Theft Auto Five. Uh, yeah, you said you finished it. I think. Oh well. Uh, uh, that's pretty much it, really. And just prattling around on the Xbox One. Obviously, I finished Rise of Rome and. Good review. I enjoyed that, reading that. And um, I think that's basically it, really. Just spending time trying 100% Lego Marvel and getting onto Assassin's Creed. There's, uh, I love the little, some of the achievements on uh, Lego Marvel, like the uh, one where it's, do I, I think it's called Do I Know You? Yeah. Um, and it's teaming up the human torch with uh, Captain, Captain America. America. And the puny god one as well. Yeah, where you've got to uh, throw Loki with Hulk. Yeah. Or smash him. Oh, yeah. Do that. Like the ground smash thing. Yeah. I really enjoyed that game. And that was actually when quite cheap. I think it was just before Christmas as well, actually. Same with Assassin's Creed 4. Uh, they went to, down to about £22.50 uh, in game. Ah. Um, you know, uh, speaking of obviously game, obviously, we, you know, there's. Uh, you know, obviously, they've had their sale and stuff. Um, there have been a site. There's a site I've been recommending for anyone who wants to trade their games and give them a look. Uh, games Hamster uh, are really good, actually. They give some some excellent trading prices. You can register on there and uh, you know have a look and, and trade your games there. And obviously, they're trying to build themselves up as a, re- a massive, really reputable uh, site. So give them a look. Um, and you know, talking about companies. You know, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, apparently HMV are uh, facing some trouble. Yeah, I think this one's been a long time Again. coming, though, hasn't it? It's it, they're still using the old bricks and mortar, it's, basically. Yeah. It's what killed Blockbuster. Uh, rest, you know, obviously, rest in peace, Blockbuster. Uh, I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you know, do you should both shop at HMV? Nope. Uh, I got a HMV card for free. We can't hear you, Liam. Or at least I can't. I can't either. Nope, that's sweet. Nope. All we can hear is a whisper, mate. Mm. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't he always try and talk monotone anyway? Oh, yeah, but <laughs> we still can't hear you, Liam. Until we get him back, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, obviously we don't want to delay the podcast no. long. Um, you know, obviously, as you say, you know, what, you've been, you've never been a customer in the past for HMV. About, or... Well, I'd say about ten years ago, if that, uh, if not longer. I mean, now it's I do all my game shopping online now because it's yeah. cheaper. Yeah. yeah, I mean, game do the odd deal, um, but uh, yeah, I think one of one of HMV's main uh, problems is they never they, they could have they could have beaten iTunes to the punch. Yeah, it's like you said, um, it's that case of they just never moved with the times. Yeah, same with Blockbuster, which is a shame. Um, you know, we, you know, we were you a, were you a, a, a customer at Blockbuster? Uh, again, I was a long time ago. Uh, but once. Things became a lot cheaper online, and it just didn't make any sense. I know there's all this, you know, support your local shops and stuff, but you know, if it's going to save me money, I'm going to go online. And most of my shopping now done on sites like Shop Two and Amazon and places like that now. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, apparently, it's, it's, uh, this is now uh, giving independent stores. Uh, apparently that's giving them a new hope uh, but they're supposedly making a comeback according I'm not sure which ones exactly but um, it's uh, but you know obviously that'd be good you know if we can get a few independent stores yeah it would be but, it would be uh, nice and I think you know publishers could do a lot of help to that as well because obviously you get a lot of places like gamestop and game get all these exclusive deals and stuff which kind of leaves the uh, like the smaller independent ones, a bit out of pocket really. If they got a bit more support from publishers, and obviously these third parties that sell on the games, and it would make it a lot easier for 
third party smaller game stores to get a decent footing i believe mm-hmm. well it's like um there's a game obviously both myself and um and alex play called the dishwasher and then there's a dishwasher dead samurai by a studio an independent studio called scar studios and um, i've been playing one of their games which are to get in the sale over christmas called charlie murder which is a great title and you know obviously we've talked about independent publishers yeah you know it's you, you get you know, obviously, when people think of independent game stores, you usually think of them back alley ones, <laughs> where you know they'll. Um, but places like that, as I mentioned, like Games Hamster, like I say, give them a look because I think they're trying. You know, they're kind of um, like an independent games, you know, website. You know, they're trying to to make a go of it. Um, you know, and I think the the problem is it's like game are getting like that with a you know with the trade prices and things. You kind of you can buy a game from game, and then it's like you know seriously you could buy it for forty five quid. I kid you not, you could take it to game the next day and say, just as an example, and say how much would you give me for this? And they'd give you like twenty two quid, and you're like, what? Yeah. It was for I bought it for forty five the day before. Um, you know, and and. Places like, you know, we talk about CEX and things like that. I mean, they're, they're good with the trade prices. Um, you know, obviously, I'm not completely happy with them because of that Peter Clatworthy thing. But, oh, well, uh... we'll not go into that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it could become white news night. <laughs> and we'd have to get Jeremy Paxman on the phone. Um, but, yeah, it, you know, it, it, it got that. Cause, I mean, but, but it's sad that Blockbuster have gone, but... They were the same as HMV. They were, um, you know, they 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 just the prices were awful. I mean, HMV's prices are, you know, like you like you mentioned about Amazon. You know, you can go to, um, you know, it's like a, a new Blu-ray at, at HMV is like eighteen, nineteen quid, and then you go to Amazon and like eleven quid. And I know obviously Amazon don't pay the the overheads and things like that, like HMV have to pay. But still, you know, they could they could easily knock the prices down. They'd sell more copies of a Blu-ray at, say, £13 than, you know, sell slightly less for more. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's like, you know, Blockbuster went... Blockbuster did do some good deals. I mean, the closing down prices were, were pretty good. Uh, picked up some bargains there, but... Yeah, the problem is, you know, obviously when they're like the same as HMV, they charged loads. And, you know, when you've got a new console and say, for example, like yourself, Mike, you've got, you know, you've got an obviously an Xbox One, you've got a PS4 to run. And, you know, running a games website, you're going to have to, uh, you know, review more than like, you know, other games as well. Not even just Xbox One and PS4, you know, um and you're not going to be able to afford those prices. You know, yeah. it's like, like you say, support your local store, but they should support us as well. <laughs> well yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's an expensive thing to be into. And I like say, especially with the, especially the new gen the, consoles, the, the, games ain't console, the games ain't cheap. No, they're about, what, £50? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not, the, not the cheapest of hobbies to be getting into at the moment, but... It's especially with somebody like me and all who doesn't trade in. Uh, me being a collector as well as a game player, I don't trade in my games, yeah. so it's... Mm. Well, there was that guy recently, um, did you see him, the collector? I, I can't remember. He's got, like, literally, like, thousands. He's basically, he's kind of one of the biggest collectors in the world. Um and you know his collection was amazing it was like even it even kind of apparently overshadowed um james rolfs oh yeah uh I've... you might see the image he sat there in a, an arsenal shirt in that um and he has like he's 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 married and everything his wife's fine with it apparently he spent something like i think he spends something like eight thousand a year on games or something like that that's a lot of money but I suppose depending on, you know, if you haven't got any other hobbies or you know, if you don't drink or smoke or something like that, I imagine. And it's something, you know, like, um, 
you know, it's if you wanted to sell it in the future, you could. You know, it's a heirloom. You know, it's something that you could hand down to your kids, and the be the value would keep going over the years. And this is it. I mean, collections like that, they're one of those that they're not going to decrease in value, are they? It's, mm. you know, the game's only going to get rarer and rarer as time goes on. I mean, we are collections. Do you just collect games that you, you know, you used to love? Or are you kind of collecting games that you feel will be worth more in the future? Well, I have no intention of selling them. So to me, it's just games I haven't got and I think I'd enjoy playing. I mean, obviously, if I come across one which I realise is worth hundreds of quid and they're only selling it for a £2 odd, I'll pick it up. But uh, mm. overall, it's just games I enjoy playing and or I think I'll enjoy playing and that I haven't already got. You know, It's one of those I have no intention of selling any of my collection or anything like that. And Hopefully, the collection will grow on time. My aim is to try and get a full Mega Drive collection, which I don't think I'll ever get, but... You never know. Oh no, you just keep uh, just keep aiming, um, you know. And obviously, people may even give you them and things like that. You know, games that aren't worth a lot. Um, like, what are you kind of? Are you even searching for for Mega Drive games that are you can't get in this country? Or um, it depends. I mean, sometimes it's whatever I pick up in shops that are fine in charity and shops and things like that. And then every now and then I'll come across a couple of games out in, you know, I'll see a video of a, a game that I quite like the look of, so I'll go hunting for it on eBay. Uh, mm. But it's like, I haven't got a definite list or anything. It's just as and when. It's the same with all the other consoles. If I see a game that I haven't got and it's going cheap enough, I'll pick it up. Mm. Which brings us on to, which ties us quite neatly into another subject that Crazy Horse Quest for a Bargain will be returning shortly. Yay. So we're going to experiment with actually adding video to this one so you'll actually get some kind of footage of us all out on the hunt for video games. Looking merry. Yes, and <laughs> Liam's back. Hello. Hey, uh, hello. Welcome back. Sorted now. Sorted. Yes. <sighs> so basically, it'd be lots of footage of old people carrying lampshades around. Yeah. With Mike trying to... Uh, <laughs> We, we might, but haggling over a copy of Shining Force 4 or something. <laughs> I'll give you 50p and yeah. not a penny more. 20. In our feet and whisper. <laughs> I've got some sherbet dips in my pocket. How's about that? <laughs> and some mint and a button. <laughs> 25p. 19p stamp as well. First class stamp. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, one of the things that we uh we don't have on the side right it's that pretty much every friday both me and liam rush down to the local town and scour the charity shops and stuff to see if we can find anything usually charity shops have like the old pc games even they even sell pc games still in the original like bot you know like the cardboard boxes, boxes yeah in the 90s. yeah big box when it's just a little cd case yeah 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 they still have them that's how old school they are the thing is though um I, I will keep an eye out for you. I've actually got... Um, I'll probably actually give it you, to be honest. I've got a copy of... Wall I think I've still got a copy of Wallace and Gromit. I'm not sure. Ooh. If I've still got it, I'll send it you. It's on the Xbox. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, I, and I got it. And honestly, I know it sounds like... I know it sounds... It sounds basically like a bit... Kind of... Uh, a bit like... Project, yeah. Project Zoo? Uh, not Project Zoo. No. Uh, it was the other one. Um... Um, no, I have Project Zoo on the PS2. I know it's like, you'll probably be like, you root through your bins. But no, basically, the charity shops, I got it from the skip at the back of the shop because the charity shops, um, they chuck out. There's been, there was a, an article in, in our one of our local papers, the Charlie Guardian, uh, pardon me, and they uh, basically, they were complaining about the charity shops basically chucking out, they were chucking out stuff. That they, they didn't sell in the back of uh, the bins around the back of it because we the back of our shop there's a big yard and I usually go out occasionally and look in there and uh, if there's any games you know I'll I'll send them to you guys as well. Oh, nice one. You know what what kind of stuff have you uh, have you picked up recently from charity shops? Have you been successful? Or... It's been a bit dry recently, it's... hasn't it, Liam? It's been terrible. There's no available anywhere. It's, I think what was it the last thing. 
I picked up worse, worth mentioning was the sequel to Mist, Big Box PC edition. Yeah. Um, oh, we should pay for that. Four quid worth or something? Uh, yeah, if that, I think. Yeah. I know you managed to see... find a few plushies, didn't you? Uh, video game plushies and. Yeah. Every now and then, the Pokemon ones and the Knuckles nice. and Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, other than that, it's been shit lately. Lately, it has, yeah. So either somebody out there who's listening to us is getting to the stores before us. <laughs> you know that there is. It's the guy with the long, uh, with the blonde hair. Yeah, we're on. We're on to you. If you're listening, <laughs> we know where you live. <laughs> if you see two uh, northerners in in Max and uh, fedoras and black shades, basically queuing up outside about nine o'clock with walkie talkies. <laughs> Synchronising, then you know who it is, mate. <laughs> you've got to get there early, that's the thing. You've got to be there at nine o'clock in the morning. Are you looking for just kind of old games or a kind of, uh, you know, because I mean, I remember I did see in one of the charity shops around the corner, uh, Sports Champions, I think it was called for the PS3 move. Uh, with me, it's pretty much anything video game related that I can play. Uh, consoles, uh, games, anything. I know you. We we tend to avoid the uh, current gen sports titles, just because they're everywhere. Every, everywhere yeah. you look, you, you can just guess what they are every time you pull one out. It's... Poundland uh, last year was selling bloody FIFA. Yeah, I think it was FIFA Eleven on the PS3 for a pound. Well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, the games that they're selling them. Poundland, have you been in? Yes. Buddy, quit, quit smoking for the DS <laughs> with about 40 copies of it. It's <laughs> 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 the same with the DVDs they sell. And there seems to be some kind of unwritten rule in the charity shops in Rotherham that every single one of them has to sell the full collections of The Sims 2. It's everywhere. It just torments us, that game. You, you go on a car boot and they're the charging like four quid for each Sims game. It's ridiculous. Jesus. Well, apparently it's uh, costs to get the whole collection. Something like a thousand pound. I'm, I kid you not. I was reading the other day, funnily enough. A thousand pound for the Sims? The whole collect, as in to get every single one, yeah. Like all the add-ons. <laughs> There's like... Literally hundreds of add-ons, apparently. Uh, I, I'm not going to even try and Google the list, because one of uh, S- Stefan's girl... You know, obviously to each their own. You know, Stefan's girlfriend... Uh, sorry, fiance, uh, Megan. She's a huge Sims fan. That's why her username's Meg Simatic, uh, short for Sim Addict. Um, You know, and she's got, like... I think she's got, like, every single one, or virtually every single one. And, yeah, seriously, I kid you not, there's, like... The power, it is supposedly about a thousand pounds for to, to get every single add-on for them all, and they release them like you don't realise how quickly. Even I don't realise how quickly they release them. They churn them out, you know. Like there was the pets, and there's university, and you know yada yada yada. I can't I, like I say I'm not even going to attempt to Google it because is it the Katy Perry one? Oh yeah, there was yeah. See, I have no against the game itself. It's just there's no, that no, many exactly. of them out there. Yeah, I mean, I've I've, I've been you know I've, been, I've played a few in the past, and you know I remember spending one weekend uh, on busting out on the PS2. I was like, that was the only game I played one weekend. And it was like seriously finished it in a weekend, literally all weekend. It's one of those you like, can sink so many hours into. Yeah, bust the the herbs was god awful though. I don't know if you ever played that. Uh, I think I've seen it on the Xbox, the original Xbox. Yeah, it was kind of um, like a, I don't know, a, a ghetto, an urban, well, obviously an urban version of The Sims, hence the name The Herbs. Uh, I think I remember having a having a dabble on that on the original Xbox. Not entirely sure. They were, they were good, yeah. There was the pets as well. Uh, I think there was oh. some kind of like castaway as well. Was... Yeah, Sims castaway, yeah. PS2, I think that one was out of work. 
Yeah. Yeah, I never played it. I saw it in game years ago, and obviously it was one of them where, you know, everybody does it. You know when you see a really bad game that you just, you always, even you guys, I bet you do it, you go into a game shop and you you pick up a really bad game and just look at it at the back. <laughs> yeah. Every single one. I know that with most games. <laughs> most games are bad. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I remember, uh, obviously, the video last podcast was Local Cycle. Um, obviously, I've read the review, but it's coming to the Xbox 360. Was it a good game uh, uh, for those who are looking forward to it or haven't played it, Mike? Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was an enjoyable game. Not the deepest of games. I get me wrong, and it, it does have a few issues, but it was a fun game for me to play. Uh, but really I've always been a big fan of, like, Twisted Pixel sense of humour anyway, so... Yeah. There's usually a Ghostbusters reference in Uh there was. Uh to be honest, I think there was a reference to most eighties and nineties pop culture in Local Cycle this time. It was filled with them. Pretty enjoyable game. Yeah, there were Ghostbusters references in uh Comic Jumper and Miss Blodgeman. Man. There were a couple in Miss Blodgeman. Man. All right. So, uh, how long was the uh, was the, uh, the the game? You know, the campaign. Um, I recall. I'd say the game was around about twelve, between fifteen and twenty hours. I think. Nice. I have that, but then again, there were times where I was being really shit and having to repeat the same thing over and over and over again. But you seemed to do all right when I was watching it on the podcast playthrough. But yeah, it was a an enjoyable game. I liked it. It was good fun. You know, kept that same kind of sense of humor. Twistle Pixel ad. I was a bit disappointed there was no kind of comedy song in this one. Uh, oh yeah, you know, like everybody loves donuts. That's my ringtone. Oh, that one. Oh, you the man! <laughs> I thought you'd have had Boom Goes the ringtone of Comic Jumper. <laughs> no, no, I've got the donut <laughs> song. Nice. <laughs> oh, you've just gone up in my estimation even more. <laughs> that is amazing. I'd bury to you, good sir. Uh, but yeah, so uh, and other news recently uh, announced was the Last of Us DLC, single player. Uh, are you going to be getting that, Liam? Oh, yes, definitely. But I'm hoping to fetch it out on the PS4 because there was rumours that it was going to be its, its own standalone game. Oh, so, here's hope. Interesting. Yeah. But if not, you're gonna get it for the PS3. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, it's it's a must purchase. I can see it selling quite well as well. Oh, of course it will. People who still, I mean, I'm gonna get a PS3 soon uh, and get Last of Us because I have to play it. I mean, you know, it's one of them where it's not like you know the Uncharted games where I could just probably miss them for a bit you know apparently the last of us is one of the games you have to play people who've played it even yourself you have to play uncharted as well uncharted's amazing yeah i will give them a chance um tomb raider was you know obviously um which i will mention something about tomb raider as you already know uh you know i think kind of tomb raider obviously uncharted kind of borrowed elements from tomb raider and tomb raider then as i mentioned in that top 10 um, best games of last gen, and then obviously, kind of Tomb Raider have, have taken elements from Uncharted uh, in the new one. Um, speaking of um, Tomb Raider, are you both going to be getting the definitive editions? I think I will be because I, ha- I haven't bought it on the 360, so I'll probably have- pick it. No, I haven't, so I'll probably pick it up for the Xbox One or the PS4. Pardon me. Oh, you, yeah, you need to. Um, you know, I, I, I'm still playing it occasionally. I've not played it for a bit, but it's one of them I'll, I'll go back to. It is amazing. Uh, one of the best games of last year. Definitely. To be honest, quite possibly the best, you know, it, definitely one of the best games of uh, last year. It was it's superb, and it came out of nowhere, really. You know, I don't think people were expecting it to be that good. Are you going to get it, Liam? Uh, most probably, yeah. I probably, I might wait till it goes a bit deeper because it's. Is it going to be that different to warrant paying forty odd quid for it? 
Well, supposedly it's not just a HD port. They have, um, you know, they have said obviously it is kind of built from the ground up. But the only disappointing thing is they said it's a definitive edition. Um, you know, usually is that going to be like a game of the year edition thing? Because there was no single player DLC, which was very disappointing. Um, there wasn't even kind of, you know, like where you get the collect special editions of Assassin's Creed 4 and you get like the odd single player mission added to it or something. It's not like that. It's, it's you know, there's no single player DLC to it, which was the only kind of disappointing thing. How was the multiplayer on Tomb Raider? Do you know what? It, it wasn't as. <laughs> no. It, do you know what? I played a few with um, some of the G kits, uh, a few sessions, and do you know what? It's not bad. You know, if there's a few people playing it, give it a go. It's fun. Um, it's not as meaty as, as, say, I don't know, Call of Duty or Gears of War or Battlefield or whatever. It's, you know, it's fun. Um, you can, like, basically, eventually you you can booby trap yourself. So if people try and run up to you, you know, like, uh, you know, if they get close to you, your body explodes and, and you know, and, and it's like your melee and things like that. It's really, really good. Uh, if you get a few people together, definitely give it a go. You play as either the Survivors or the Solari. Uh, the Survivors um, event obviously being the cast from the game. And once you get to level 60, you, you can purchase Lara and play as her. Ah. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Go. Yeah, it's a good game. Um, you know, and you obviously get new weapons and new perks and things like that. Um, yeah, and, you know, it was such a, a fantastic game. The whole, you know, it, it was just the whole kind of going from a young, frightened girl to a survivor. You know, that was just... That was one of the key elements of the game, and it really kind of worked. And, and Camilla's performance was superb, you know, and... and you know, she, you kind of see how she toughened up through the gate. You see it and, and all the things you unlock, like the rope, um, like the, the, the fire arrows and, and new weapons and stuff. It's definitely worth getting. And the collectibles are addictive. Oh, I mention collectibles. Do you know what? I enjoy going after them. I'm not usually a collectibles carry guy. You know what you mean? Uh, I kind of give up on Assassin's Creed half the time. I've not done the... Deep sea, the, the di- you know, the diving belts. I've not done all them yet. That's the one part of the game I'm not too keen on. Is the deep sea diving? It's all right. Um, it does feel like a bit of a chore, but you have to do it to get the um, prerequisites to finish off upgrading the uh, jet door. Speak for yourself. I bought them. <laughs> That's an easy way out. Yep. yep. I did one of the diving missions, and then when I realised some of the upgrade plans for the jackdaws are in them, I was like, "Fuck that!" And I just, <laughs> I just bought the uh, unlock, so I don't need to get the uh, blueprints. Still need to pick all the resources and stuff, but yeah, yeah, um, that's, they're not bad. Um, I don't even like uh, going to the different islands and doing the uh, the I forgot what they're called now. Wait. The Mayan statues, that's the one. Yes. Have you done any of them? uh, I've got one Mayan statue to find. Nice. And I've got all the Templar keys and got the Templar suit. Oh, sweet. Ah. Is that any, is that, uh, give you any, uh, any, any kind of abilities Uh, or anything? Not that I can tell. Ah. It's just stronger armor, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, nice. Um, Like I said, get Freedom Cry. If you like Assassin's Creed 4. Cool, cool. So I'll be, uh, I'm close to finishing that now, so you can expect to see a review up over the weekend, hopefully, for Assassin's Creed 4. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was going to review it, but I thought it's a long, it'd be a long, it'd be a really kind of long review. Um, so I'll hand it over to Mike, you know. <laughs> um, well, not obviously, you know, you do the really good long re- game reviews uh, really well. Um, and obviously recently uh, you mentioned that you got a Tetris lamp for Christmas and to tie in that as we mentioned before there is going to be a, a 30th anniversary version of Tetris for the Xbox One yeah I, I, this is the first I've heard about it 
uh, to be honest. Yeah, I was only just checked on Xbox Achievements. Yeah, it's not Xbox360Achievements.com anymore. It's Xbox Achievements because they obviously got the Xbox One Achievements on there as well tied in. Yeah, so it's uh, it's good to see that they're really pushing for you know next-gen games coming out on next-gen consoles. Mm. Uh, <laughs> have they mentioned no, how much Tetris is going to cost? I shall look for you now. Um, You'll probably have to sell a kidney. I've got two of them. Adam. I doubt it. It'll be. A, I reckon it'll be a fiver like Peggle Two was. Which have you got that or? No, no, I didn't buy Peggle Two. Oh, I haven't yet. Anyway, I don't. Is that the three sixty exclusive or? Uh, Xbox One. It's out on as yeah. well. Will come out on the 360 eventually, same with local cycle. No, it's not been given a date or a price yet. Yeah. Tetris. Um, yeah, I think anything more than a fiver, then they're just blatantly trying to rip people off. Yeah. But yeah, it'd be nice to see Tetris on uh, on current gen. It could change me having to try and boot up my Game Boy and play it. Oh, the Game Boy version was... It's one of my favourite games of all time. Absolutely fantastic, the original. You know, I, I hated when they did all these... Like, these new versions, and it just... Like, blitz and whatnot. You just don't mess with the original format. It just becomes... Then it's just takes away what made the great game so great. It was, you know, it was like Yeah, it was like Sensible Soccer. You know, it was a fantastic game and one of my favourite of all time. But then the, the one that came out in, I think it was 2006 for the PS2 and Xbox, was just shocking. I remember. They try and keep it fresh, though, don't they? Like yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to... Go Sorry, go on. Uh, no, no, go on, go on. I completely forgot what I was going to say then. Uh, well, I'm obviously, I'm on Crazy Horse at the time, uh, at the minute. Uh, obviously, you've mentioned about uh, Pots vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. That is looking excellent as well. Um, that, are you going to look into that? Are you both going to get that? Or... Probably not. I'm not a huge fan of the mobile game. No, um... it's Garden Warfare is a console game. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> And I got to admit, I haven't played any of the Plant vs. Zombies yet, so it'd be something I'll look into. Mm. I think. Is it the same sort of style than like a. No, it's a third person, this one. Kind of oh, third really? person one there. You know, it's going to be um, a bit weird, isn't it? It will be, but it's different. It's same, you know, obviously, you kind of. It's going to be kind of like a, a massive kind of all out shooter, really. You might enjoy it. Yeah, you know, it's do. not just a static. A it yeah. looks fun. From um, what I've seen of the, the the footage and stuff that's out there, it does look like it'd be quite a fun game. Hmm. Definitely. Um you know, obviously they've announced that Far Cry Wild Exhibition Expedition as well. Uh that uh if you've never played obviously Far Cry Classic is finally got uh you know, real it's finally getting a release. Um, you know, did you ever play did you play Far Cry three? Or No, which is why I'll be picking this one up. Yeah, oh, Blood Dragon and Free are absolutely stunning too. Was was boring. It was it was. Oh. But uh, yeah, give Free and, and Blood Dragon a go. Um, Have you played the first one? The I've not. Yeah, I played it, uh, and it wasn't bad. And I played the Predator. Was it Predator as what, well? Instinct Predator. Yeah. Instinct that, Predator. Yeah. That's the best. It was one. all right. Why did you enjoy it? Yeah, many hours online on that game. So mm. good. That and Prey, yeah, I used to play a lot at the time. Um, but yeah, Free and Blood Dragon were just stunning. Have you played? Uh, have you played that any of the others since? Like two, Free and Blood Dragon, Liam, or? Uh, you, I'm still playing Free. It's what are your thoughts? Uh, it's a good game. It's very time consuming. Mm. It's fun to play. Yeah. Uh, you know, just kind of taking a hang glider over the beautiful ocean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was, it was in my top ten. Uh, and obviously the big news recently, uh, Mike will be happy to know that uh, Halo 4 
Five. Uh, sorry, Halo Five. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I can tell I'm not Halo play. Yeah, Halo Five uh, is going to be released this year, uh, if it actually is. Um, thoughts, Mike, being a big Halo fan? Um, well, we knew it was coming. You know, they weren't going to not do a Halo. I just kind of figured that they were going to use Halo Five as a launch title for the Xbox One, but obviously that. Wasn't going to happen. Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see where they go with it. As much as a Halo fan I am, I do feel like they're kind of stretching the story a bit thin at the moment. And I'm the same with, with any franchise. I think when you get so far, you should either just stop or, or reboot it. You know, I'm, I'm the same with, with things like Resident Evil, uh, Halo, no. Call of Duty. I think it's... Resident 6 and Revelations are uh, on my backlog. I did end up picking that up recently. I'm I'm of the opinion that when you start getting to like the 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 five, six, seven, and eights of a of a franchise, then maybe it's time to either call it a day for them or reboot them if you still want to milk them for money rather than just trying to drag it out. It's just so hidden messages in that in in that statement, then Mike, because you said call. And franchise is being stretched out. Am I sensing some kind of uh, hint to uh, <laughs> Treyarch and Infinity Ward? Well, you know, <laughs> you can call it a hint well, if you want, or you can say stop bringing uh, the same shit out yeah. every year. But yeah, well, they've they've got uh, apparently Sledgehammer are, uh, looking for people to work on the eleventh one. Oh. Mm. See again, and uh, but, I mean, so even with the like, like say the the likes of Final Fantasy and stuff, they just after so long it just gets tired. Hmm. It's. What about Assassin's Creed? That's another one that gets uh, obviously people kind of they're, they're divided opinions. Well, me and Liam were talking about this the other day, and my opinion is that this should be the last one. It won't be. I know it won't the... be. <laughs> But it should it, no. be. I, um, well, supposedly, um, you know, I think it, it goes from strength to strength, I think, to be honest. Um, you know, supposedly this year they're doing a next gen version uh, and a last gen version, but two separate games. Um, like a, well, sorry, not a next gen version, and sorry, two separate Assassin's Creed games this year. And obviously, Liberation HD came out this week. Yeah, uh, that's on yet. Xbox Live, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Came out yesterday, actually, funnily enough. But it's uh, £16. I was like, yeah, I can't afford that at the minute. Um, no, not for £16 either, but I will pick that up. Um, which is good, because it kind of gives you two different Assassin's Creed games. But like you say, it kind of, you, you kind of wonder if they're stretching themselves a bit too... You know, too much with that. No, will they? Will they have enough ideas? It's like going on to Telltale Games, uh, as I mentioned before. They've announced Tales from the Borderlands and uh, Game of Thrones as well. Um, do you think they'll? Do you both think they'll? They'll start working on them now, or do you think they'll wait until they've done The Walking Dead season two and The Wolf Among Us season one? I think they'll get The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us out of the way. I think if they were trying to do everything at once, I think it'll stretch the studio too much. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, speaking of, obviously, you know, you don't want to stretch your developers too far. Because uh, speaking of, obviously, another developer beginning with T, um, unfortunately, you know, due to... Survival Instinct and uh, Connect Star Wars being absolutely god awful. Um, Terminal Reality, unfortunately, gone the uh, way of the uh, job centre. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, another studio bites the dust, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, thoughts? Uh, see, it seems to be that it's. Same with that studio as well as many others that there's that many of them shutting down that I just think it's development costs getting out of hand. Mm. I mean, what was it? Um, 
oh, it was on Twitter today that apparently one of the developers from Ubisoft has quoted, or has been mentioned as saying that even before the delay on um, Watch Dogs, it's cost them something like $68 million to develop. Jeez. <laughs> you think at that point you kind of need to rein in your spending a bit and cut back on costs. Maybe that's to... why they're, they're churning out Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> <laughs> to cover it, yeah. I mean, what, I mean what, what are your guys' opinions on, on things like that? What? The fact that Ubisoft is spending... Um... Well, just generally the cost of game development as it is. Um, well, I forgot who it was. I was reading... Um... I was, I was reading something I mean, it was yesterday the day before um, so it was a game where it was mar- marketed so heavily recently um, I think you know I think yeah it, it, to be honest it's I can understand obviously you've got to spend a lot of marketing especially with it being next gen but you know when it comes to something like that and there's a heavy risk you know, you spend a lot of money on a game and, you know, and the game, like you say, gets delayed. Um, you know, like I'll mention one game now, which, uh, which ties onto the next subject in a minute, uh, Aliens Colonial Marines. You know, that game, they spent so much on it and so much time. And then, you know, there is that risk. I mean, Watch Dogs won. I think Watch, I think Watch Dogs will succeed and they'll make the 68 million back, possibly, you know, but... Um, yeah, it's it's a heavy risk, you know, and and they're spending all that money on on it, and you know, like marketing development, etc. And like you said, the game's not even out yet. It's like it it is a you know, like we were going on about independent uh, games, you know, games companies and and independent shops and things like that. It's like you know, when a company can afford to spend that much money, it's you know. <sighs> And then not make that back, it's like, it, you know, and this is a big games company, it doesn't fare well for the rest. I mean, you know, like we mentioned about Call of Duty Ghosts, you know, they, they said they're going to make, you know, they, they're going to, you know, succeed. They're going to take over GTA 5 in terms of sales, and they haven't. And it's like, you're going to spend that much money on, on a game, on marketing, etc. And, and, you know, and, and, and there is that risk, yeah, you won't make it back. But I mean, it's surely when you get to the amount that they're spending like that, it becomes more of a reality. Because at that point, you're getting these unrealistic sales targets of we need to ship yeah. six million, seven million copies of the game. You're like, well, it's not going to happen. Well, Tomb Raider last year, yeah. Going back to that, you know, as mentioned on the free podcast, um, you know, they spent that much on marketing for the game. Um, you know that. They, they, they sold 3.4 I think it was something like in the first month or, or whatever or a couple of months they sold 3.4 million copies of Tomb Raider and then said it failed what? Th- that's not a failure That's that is not a failure but to their sales targets they wanted something like 5-6 million like you mentioned and it's like you know and then for them to sell that many and then go that's a failure you know it's like well, then you've clearly budgeted wrong during your game's development. Yeah, exactly. And that's what, you you know, like you were saying about Watch Dogs. Um, you know, they're going to, like, you know, you mentioned they're going to have unrealistic sales targets now. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why. Because obviously if they don't make these costs back through game sales, they've got to recuperate that loss somehow. And I think that's where you see the closure of of studios left, right, and centre. I mean, you've only got to look at THQ and the one game that ruined them at that one. You know, when it was, uh, what was it you draw for the 360 and PS3, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That didn't even fancy that. It wasn't even kind of, yeah. Um, that, how much did that, did, have you, do you know a figure of how much that lost? <sighs> well, from what I understand it, if it hadn't have been for that game, that year would have been THQ's most successful year. It pretty much wiped out all profits that Saints Row 3 made them. And 
things like Space Marines and stuff, all the profits were just wiped out by Udraw, and there was something silly like they still had over a million units in storage that just didn't ship. Yeah, I mean, I picked it up in Tesco once, looked at it, and it was like, do you know, this doesn't even interest me. Even the Pictionary edition, it was like, do you know what, this doesn't look like a party game. You'd probably play it once. It was, it was a shame, but, you know, it's... It's one of the things when you've got that much money run, riding on one title <coughs> mm. and it flops. Yeah. Um, you know, like with Connect Star Wars and uh, The Walking Dead exactly, Survivor, yeah. and stuff, that ultimately killed Terminal Reality, which is a shame because obviously, as you know yourself, Ghostbusters was an excellent game. Yeah, it was from... a brilliant game. Hmm. Very, very great movie tie-in and uh, great fan service, you know. But, um, you know, moving on to the next subject, as we mentioned about Aliens Colonial Marines, which is free quid in game at the minute. Uh, <laughs> that, that That is probably, I think, well, Max Payne was the one that, Max Payne 3 was the one that dropped in price so quick, but Aliens seems to have dropped quite quick as well. Um, yeah, it's free quid at the minute. But uh, Alien Isolation uh, officially announced. Thoughts, Liam? Excited. Very excited. It, it looks awesome. But then again, so did Aliens Colonial Marines. <laughs> <laughs> well, from what I understand, they've kept Gearbox out of uh, the loop in this one. They're not developing it, are they? No. Uh, not too sure, to be honest with you. Creative Assembly. That's the one, yeah. Um... Well, what I've read today, um, they're saying that it, it looks like a last-gen game. It, it's not polished enough. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I know they've got more time on it, but it's not... It, this, uh, from what I've read as well, they're saying that how is it going to hold up one alien for a 12-hour game? Well, that's where the survival horror thing comes in, doesn't it? It's yeah, yeah. But yeah. how 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 long can you prolong that though? I mean, well, it all depends if they do it well enough. I mean, the whole, I mean, the the true thing of survival horror is it's not the actual combat or the the amount of enemies you're fighting. It's the atmosphere itself, isn't it? You know where yeah, where things like yeah. dark corridors become a a nightmare for you, or you know what's in the next room. Yeah, that's where they've kind of failed on. You know, like like Alien vs. Predator, the original was was a classic. Um, you know, great game. And, um, but the one that came out from uh, were the developers, you know, the one that came out about four years ago, was it now? Um, for it, about four or five years ago. Um, you played as an alien on that, and you played as a predator as well. But you played in the alien campaign. And you were stalking Marines, and it was like that should that had the potential to be really kind of, like you say, atmospheric, quite scurry, and ultimately it was just a horrible mess. Like it was just you kind of got a headache after playing it because the motion blur, it's from fun. moving around too fast. Funny you should mention that. that camera work. Uh, hmm? I would say it's funny you should mention that game because I believe that's the version that me and Liam have just played for Versus Thursday. Do you know the multiplayer was good? Um, I enjoyed playing as a predator against other kind of like marines and you know and teaming up and stuff. That was really really good. Um, yeah, it wasn't a classic on the, the multiplayer, but it was fun. Um, what did you know? Obviously, are you allowed to kind of talk about your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the video the video's up now. Uh, at, oh, right, at this point up. of recording, it's gone up today. So it's I got my ass handed to me on it. <laughs> Uh, oh, but it, it looked like a really enjoyable game. I know you're a big fan of it, aren't you, Liam? Yeah, yeah it's classic. It's uh, one an underrated game that should have been purchased a lot more. I must admit, it's, it, I don't think it sold well, did it? That that was the, the no, problem. No, it was because word of mouth spread fast with it. Yeah, the well, marine camp was shite. Um, the Predator campaign was the best. So well, yeah, sure. I, I enjoyed the Marine one. I, I thought it was like true to the like aliens. You know, you know the second movie. It's 
it, it kind of got me hooked. Sort mm. of thing. See, I have to wonder, and all, just how much of a niche market is the Alien franchise? As, a, as, um, as opposed to like other, other more popular games like the Call of Duty franchise or the Halo franchise or you know Tomb Raider, so on and so forth. It's one of them where I think developers, you know, you don't see that many Aliens games out there because, you know, it's ones like you say, it's a niche. It's where developers really, they, they have a go every five, six, seven years or whatever. I mean, well, not, ten, maybe ten years or so. You know, like the last Aliens game before Aliens vs Predator was what Alien trilogy on the uh, PS One. Uh, they tried doing a tactical, real-time strategy thing for the original Xbox. Uh, they did Alien vs Predator on PC. Yeah, that was a classic version. Yeah, because um, yeah, I remember getting the gold edition for that from Sierra. It was superb. Um, but you know, no. Um, it, it's one of them where developers will, will take it every maybe, like you say, ten years or eight, nine, maybe seven or eight years or so, whatever. And and you know, yeah, they don't release it all the time because it's it's hard to to nail down. It's hard to kind of you you, know, you couldn't just release an aliens game all the time. It's one of them where a developer wants to do it justice. Yeah, because I mean, you've got uh, quite a demanding fan base as well. They're going to be quite yeah, that's yeah, picky about it as such. Reading up yeah. on Alien vs Predator, it is the best-selling game on Steam, the fastest-selling game in 2010 in the UK, mm-hmm. and it debuted at number one and sold 1.7 million copies. See, I mean, you you look at those sales figures now. The fastest-selling game, and it hit number one at 1.7 million copies. Yeah. Uh, just going back to what you know we were on about earlier on about sales targets for video games, and now you're looking at them saying it's a failure at three and a half million. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy horse. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, but PC gamers, you know, obviously that sales target, you know, that obviously that must have been well, not sales target, but that sales figure, sorry. Um, you know, and it's done well, got to number one because obviously, you know, people weren't expecting it. You know, it just kind of, it, you know, it, it's such a great, it's a classic game. It's one of them where, you know, it's it's obviously I don't know how it came out what um, ten years ago, something like that, or maybe a bit longer. I can't remember now. I got it for the PC originally. Um, you know, and for it to, to just come out like that and, and and hit number one again, it's like. It's still, you know, obviously it must, it's, it's got its core fan base, like you mentioned about the Aliens fans. Um, you know, and for it to just come out and hit number one like that and just, you know, about seven or eight years later or whatever it was, um, you know, it shows that the Aliens fan base are diehard and they care about it and, you know, it's, it, they still love the classic game. Yeah, and I imagine, I think... I think- in certain ways, it's a good thing that they don't keep pumping out alien game after alien game, because otherwise you end up yeah. in a scenario where you get with like Star Wars, where they yeah, just lose. Sorry. Oh, go on. No, go on. No, no, you were saying sorry. Go on. I was just going to say where you see that they just pump out game after game, and there just doesn't seem to be any care for the the uh, the franchise itself. Mm. Yeah, and plus it'll lose that, you know. They couldn't, I don't, you know, they, they'd lose that, it'd lose that tension yeah. about it and things like that. You know, it'd just be another run of the mill shooter. Have you guys got any predictions about the New Aliens game? <sighs> it's hard to say given the, <laughs> the response to Colonial Marines. Yeah, I'm going to hold him back. Yeah. Uh, uh, I hope it's a success, you know, but it's one of them where is it going to be another, you know, just another run-of-the-mill shooter or is it genuinely going to be, you know, like Mike said, is it going to be atmospheric? Is it going to be a great site survival horror? I don't know. Um, but there is one that does sound... Um, it, it's coming out later this year. I think it said it's December it's coming out, called Evolve. That actually does sound really... It, does, it sounds quite promising, um, you know, you play as kind of these soldiers against like um, like 
beasts or a, I think it's just one beast or whatever. I can't remember. And you've got infinite ammo, but this beast gets stronger. Um, and obviously you, you've got to take down kind of like, it sounds a bit like, like a, a, a cheer rock a bit. Right. Um, and you know, and obviously it, it's coming out for the Xbox One later this year, and I think the PS4 as well. Um, you know, give, give it. You know, give a read about it. It does sound quite promising. Um, you know. Yeah, we look. At, like you say, when you said, is it like a first-person shooter, or are they going out of the way to make it a survival horror? Or no, it's not going to be a survival horror. I think it's going to be like a first-person shooter. Uh, one sec. All right, they've announced oh, Diablo 3. Um, where is it now? See, I think that in its sense becoming a, a harder and harder franchise harder and harder. to keep fresh and new is the first person shooters. We get that many of them now. <sighs> yeah, I mean, there's been, there were some games on the uh, Xbox 360. There was one called. Um, Singularity, which was 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 kind of underlooked, um, you know, and it was it was very very underrated, and uh, you know, and that obviously got over, you know, oh, sorry overlooked um, by call because of games like Call of Duty. Uh, yeah, it's a 2K game uh, Evolve. Uh, basically, it's a five versus one multiplayer. Ah, that sounds quite good. That yeah, yeah it's. Uh, Basically, it says, according to, well, weapons have unlimited ammunition and hunters can only die and be revived three times before their game ends. So it looks like they're going for the hardcore uh, style of game and then not a endless repeat of just spawn and spawn and spawn and spawn. No, no. Um, you know, obviously, you've got to take the monsters down. Uh, basically, the monster player will also leave tracks for hunters. You know, the wildlife plays a role in the game plays. Monster players will also have to feed on it in order to grow ah. stronger. Apparently, the monster player will also leave tracks for hunters to follow, including visual and oral clues. Um, meanwhile, on the hunter side, players will be class-based, including assault, medic, uh, medic support and trappers assault focuses on blasting the crap out of things medic provides health boost support provides various power ups and shields and trappers contain the monsters um, weapons of unlimited ammo hunters can only die and be revived three times and there's like a progression system and it's tur uh, turtle rock and uh, 2k that sounds really interesting that when is that one out? Uh, December supposedly uh yeah, I was reading, I think it said December. Uh... It kind of reminds me of, going back to earlier, you know how Far Cry Instinct's Predator? Yeah. One of the game modes, it was Predator mode, and you had four Predators that could, that were super fast, could jump real high. Obviously, they could use weapons, but they could slash you as well. And the only way you could kill them was by going on the generator and using this thing to, like, hurt their ears, sort of thing. And... If you killed them, you'd get a marine back, and if they k killed you, you'd sit out until you could come back in. Like a, a survival sort of game. It's... Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't really touch the multiplayer much on that. See, um... I, I kind of like the sound of that tracking mode you were mentioning there, you know, where they leave, leave clues, and mm. I think that could be a really cool little feature. You see, that that's what Far Cry me, because the Predators, when they viewed you... You'd come up orange and you'd leave a trail behind you and you'd knock trees over and stuff like that. It, ah. If yeah. you if you were silent and not moving, they couldn't see you, sort of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, kind of. Um, well, it's like the Aliens vs. Predator thing, yeah. It's yeah. also saying it's a four player uh, co op shooter as well. Um, like Left 4 Dead. Yeah, that could be quite interesting, that. Sounds amazing. Yeah, it's. Uh... Titanfall seems to be getting a lot of uh, hype as well. Yeah, I think that one's going to be one of those that, as time goes on, it's going to be harder and harder to live up to the hype. Mm. In, uh, well, in it, my opinion. It's more, yeah, you know, everyone's going to be... 
basically using, you know, everyone's going to get it because it's a massive multiplayer game and stuff. Um, you know, but uh, are you going to get it, guys? Or um, I might do. I might do it. I'm going to... I want to see if they actually dedicate any more time to single players because I'm not a big multiplayer myself and that seems to be what Titanfall revolves around. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of on the on the fence with that one at the moment. I might get it. Yeah, yeah a few people, obviously. But uh, are you gonna, both going to get Watch Dogs? Yes. As we were mentioning before. Yes. Definitely. It's a must buy. Yeah, I'll probably get it this gen. That, uh, that was my initial uh, launch game for the PS4. Oh, yeah, I remember you mentioned when we had the podcast with Batch, yeah. Um, it does sound, you know, it sounds kind of... Uh, I like the open-world element to it. Yeah, I think it's going to be the... Uh, I think they're going for having that replace Assassin's Creed as the flagship for <laughs> Ubisoft. Yeah, the black flagship. Hey! <laughs> we got a pirate. Uh, so- it's comedy night at Crazy Horse tonight. <laughs> I think. Uh, we should do our little uh, little um, kind of open night, yeah. I'll anybody just... wants to? Uh, anybody got any jokes you want to email in or anything like that? Any fancy a spot? There we go. We'll uh, we'll give that one to Marty. He can do his own open <laughs> mic night once a month. <laughs> Marty does stand up, but then sits down because he's uh, can't be <laughs> standing up for too long. <laughs> <laughs> and cracks open a kind of curly. It just reminded me, there's um, I'm assuming it's still there. There was a game on Xbox Live where it was like a a stand up thing. You no, know, it was one of these Avatar games. Oh yeah, I never played it. You do like yeah. a, an open mic night in front of a crowd of Xbox Live people, which obviously, you know, what could go wrong with that? Having you doing stand up comedy in front of a group of randoms on Xbox Live. But yeah. it was uh, it was an interesting concept. I could bring along my heater. <laughs> you could what? I could bring along my heater. You could. Yeah, because it'd be the warmer part. Way. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I think we better talk more about games because that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and the jokes are terrible. Yeah, two for the price. Well, one out of two ain't bad. Oh, you know. <laughs> um, another one that's been announced is Dark Souls 2. Yes, that's already on my pre-order list, that one. As dark as our jokes. Um, I was going to say, yeah, I'm surprised you're getting that. Because uh, obviously you weren't... You couldn't really play the first one properly, could you? Well, you, weren't very, you, were, you admitted you, was, you kind of got frustrated with it. Um, yeah, kind of. I'll go back to it. Uh, it's one of those I've started and I need to get back and beat it. It's I haven't given up on it. I've just taken a slight break. Uh. <laughs> slight break meaning what? A long time. Like, until you, you kind of, what, a few years? Well, I'd like to point out that it is Liam who's doing the Let's Play of that and we haven't seen any <laughs> episodes of that for a while. Yeah. The last thing I did on that was an episode where I didn't hit record. That's so. ne- that's never good for viewing that. No, no. This is coming oh, from yeah. my still not finished The Walking Dead season one. I hit record, but had no commentary for it. That was it. So uh, th- there is an actual episode that I just need to do the commentary. Because <laughs> uh, I enjoyed them. Um, are you getting that on release? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's one of those awesome games that you, you just need to play. The first one, well, Dark Souls was so good. It's it's, it's only what what the world has within it, you know. It's it, it kind of takes what Skyrim did and makes it that little bit darker and harder. You know, it's it's a hardcore game. Sort of thing. I did actually get some uh, hands-on with Dark Souls 2 at the uh, Play Expo in Manchester. 
and yeah, I got my Thoughts? ass handed to me. Uh, uh, any <laughs> anybody out there concerned? Are they that... supposed to be releasing an easy? Well, they said they were going to make it appeal to a wider audience. So obviously that raised fears that it was going to be easy. Uh, and... For the first one, yeah. And it, um, it's not. It's just as hard. And I, I read anyway. they were going to release the patch to, uh, to have it in easy difficulty for Dark Souls. Uh, yeah, I read that a while back and all. I don't know if they've got an easy mode on Dark Souls now or... No, they haven't. They haven't. That's why Liam's like, holding off doing his videos. <laughs> He's going to sneak it onto easy and then all of a sudden look awesome. Yeah. <laughs> He's just going to stretch the video out to make it look harder, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I won't necessarily say Dark Souls is a hard game as long as you take your time on it. Yeah, I'm going to say it's hard. Somebody once described it as like a video game version of the uh, Nightmare as in the TV show. Like, you have to kind of take your time. If you rush through it, you die. Um, yeah, yeah I suppose you it, could look yeah. at it like that. Well, if you look at things, there's always a way to do it in the easiest way if you just think about it. I mean, like that first boss, well, your next boss, Mike, where you can run past him and then go back and yeah. climb the See, I like to think of it as in, like you were saying that about it being the video game version of Nightmare. It's more of an old school video game, I think. Like you were saying, it's hard, but there is a way around it if you take your time and think about it. And they're basically just not going to throw any clues to you. You've got to figure it out yourself. If you can't, well, then fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Which was pretty much the, the kind of way video games used to be made. Mm, yeah, they, they don't make them like they used to, really. Ninja Gaiden 2 was, was, was hard. I've never played 3. Um, I don't really got panned, but... Uh... You know, Ninja Gaiden still keeps that kind of difficulty, and and Dark Souls kind of they keep that that kind of difficulty spike going. But yeah, it's like you have unlimited lives on games now, so it's still, you know, it's still easy. Um, platformers, you don't make them like they used to either. No, you don't see any classic platformers now, do you? I suppose Rayman's the nearest. And maybe Mario? I don't know, I haven't played a Mario in a while. I mean, I used to love kind of like Croc, Crash Bandit, Jack and Daxter. Yeah, I mean, like Rayman. Um, yeah. Would you still platformers, though, really? I mean, um, the ones on the DS are. I've, I've heard good things about the new one, the Wii U. Have you got that, Liam, or are you getting it? Uh. Yeah, I probably will do at some point. Did you get the Wind Waker HD sent to you? Yeah, we got it, and then it, I didn't really have enough time to get into it, so I, I'm going to buy it again at some point. Ah. Yeah, I'm just trying to think if you know any actual platform-style games that I can actually think of. And there's... Well... There's Meg- more independent, like, um, Fez and, uh, well, not that's not even, well, I'd say more like, what was the one, Braid? Yeah. Yeah, that was a, a platformer. Super and Meat Boy. I was just going to say, would you class Boy. Super Meat Boy as a platformer? Um, hmm, yeah. I suppose you would, yeah. I guess so. A yeah, platformer with kind of, uh, I don't know, puzzles kind of thing, yeah. Um, I mean, would you class Catherine as a platformer? But I've heard it's been called a platformer. Um, that's a good point, yeah. Um, possibly. You know, because it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of side-scrolling thing as well a bit. Uh, it's got that kind of view to it at times. Um, that's a good question. Uh, if anybody wants to email in you comments on YouTube <laughs> or whatever, message us, then uh, feel free. You know, is Catherine and uh, Super Meat Boy, are they platformers? Yeah. 
Nice. What about Mega Man 10 on the Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network? Yeah, I suppose yes. you can't really argue that they're. I think they're clearly. Hard as what? <laughs> they're like a proper throwback to the old platformers, aren't they, really? Yeah. Can't be Mega Man 2, though, that was the best. Although I heard 10, you know, I hear good things about 10. Well, Mega Man X, yeah. This Mega is Man 10. Far too hard. Mm, I've heard that. Have you got it? Yeah, it's it's just relentless. You you try and pick a level and think, oh, I'll do this one. And each level you pick just seems to get harder and harder. It's... Good though, really, because it's like Mike said, they don't, you know, you want a a, a difficult game. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of skill to do that. See, so would you consider um. Things like Tomb Raider and Assassin's Creed, the kind of spiritual evolution to platformers, or? Um, no. You Tomb don't... Raider's more of a kind of an, an, an adventure kind of survival game. You know, you're not pla- the, you're platformers... Not... Like Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine, I know what you're saying they're kind of they were a bit more. You can go anywhere, whereas they weren't either. Like say Crash Bandicoot was linear, um, as was like Super Mario Brothers on the N, uh, on the NES. Obviously, one being you know uh, side scrolling, one being uh, third person. But no, I, <sighs> I mean, I mean kind of along the lines of do you think that's where the platformers have evolved to when you think of like the Assassin's Creed with the, the parkour and stuff like that I see what you mean yeah yeah you know um, and kind of instead of getting a mushroom you've got to kind of yeah you've got to try and you know work to what you know mush, instead of mushrooms it's kind of upgrades yeah yeah um, I mean, I don't think the platformers in point. the form that you know we consider platformers, but I wonder yeah. if that's where they've evolved to with you know the new tech and mm. new generations needed to be more impressed. And that is a good question. Yeah, um, I, I, I think so. Yeah, because I mean, you know, like. You kind of saw the early signs of that with, um, as I mentioned, like Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine were, even though they were still quite linear, you kind of could go anywhere. And, you know, like you know, like Super Mario 64, for example, you could do them in any order. You could yeah. Do kind of, you know, you, you could go anywhere. Jack and Daxter as well. You know, the Jack games, um, like Jack 2. On the PS2, that was like Grand Theft Auto in a way. Yeah, you know, kind of sandbox open world a bit. It's because, I mean, I mean, I suppose you've also got to think an old, do you think the you know, what we consider the classic platformer games, do you think there's really only a market for them for people who remember the old school? Or do you reckon there is a, a, a generation of people out there who would benefit from a fresh batch of like classic designed platformers or do you I think, think we just hold on well. to nostalgia um i think if done well i think it's kind of a mixture of both i mean i think if done well you know they could bring back platformers they should um i mean especially in the form of arcade games you know i'd even i happily have that um but yeah there is i think you know you kind of the, the platforming genre, probably, I won't say it's dead, because like I say, you kind of look at it on Xbox Live Arcade and things, and you see like Braid, etc., and whatnot. Um, you know, and, and, and they're still keeping that alive. You know, they're not letting, you know, independent comp- you know, independent developers, etc., aren't letting that genre die, which is good. Um, but, yeah, you know, are they as good as the originals? Are they as fun? You know, um, it, it's it's a difficult one because because we have much no, as I mean, light, like, sorry you, go on we have nostalgia on our side don't we it's one of those yeah exactly um 
you know, so anybody that comes along now and says, I don't know, I want to make... I think if they were going to release another Crash Bandicoot game, you go, no. If it was a new, fresh idea, I think... To see them bring back the platforming genre because it's one that just suddenly just kind of, you know, it, it didn't even suddenly just like go downhill. It was just it stopped. You know, it just suddenly kind of kind of grinded to a halt, and you were like, "Where's all these great platformers?" You know, like Jack and Daxter and Crash Bandicoot and Spyro were the last great ones. Ratchet and Clank. They still do Ratchet and Clank games, but. Like you say, I think you do kind of hold on to a bit of nostalgia with that because it's kind of like the Ratchet and Clank games. Apparently, they're not as good um, as they used to be, you know. Um, and the Crash Bandicoot games on the PS2 and the Xbox were, were awful uh, on the 360 and whatnot. Um, you know, I'd like to see them kind of come with new ideas if they can. But, yeah... Um, you know, I think we are kind of holding on to a lot of nostalgia. You know, like DuckTales Remastered was, was beautiful last year. You know, um, so it's a bit of both, like I say. You know, it's kind of... Uh, <sighs> what are your thoughts? Uh, well, that's, I mean, I know I know. Um, you were speaking about the Crash Bandicoot. I know you've mentioned a few times you'd love to see a rebirth, wouldn't you, Liam? Yeah, it's one of my favourite games on PlayStation. It's... I think they've announced one, haven't they? Coming out next gen. Have they? Yeah, it's uh, like a, a reboot sort of thing. Try and get a bit of info. I don't die. It, the listing <laughs> went on Amazon. Was it a, another one of those accidental leaks? Yeah, but I'd that was a pinch of salt. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I tell that with a pinch of salt because you remember the Skyrim reveal last week. Oh, the that was a, next gen thing, was it? Or yeah, where supposedly there was going to be an Xbox One and PS4 version of Skyrim, and they they were going to use HD tech. Or apparently, you know, people are saying they could use HD texture packs, etc., etc. Um, no, I. <sighs> Would you would you want to see another Crash Bandicoot game, Mike? I wouldn't, personally. Yeah. I think like he's, said before. Sorry, go on. I think he's one of them characters that just, like you said, he should just go out on a high note. But he didn't. Hmm. Uh, Re-release HD. I don't know. I'd like to see, like you were saying, more fresh IPs. Sim- similar hmm. genre, but new fresh ideas and you know like the Mario games they always kind of they keep you know they release the Mario games we mentioned on the last podcast the difference between Mario and Sonic uh, we talk about Sonic how he's kind of gone down a bit you know Mario the Mario games I mean they would you know I've played them on the Wii I played the Mario Brothers U I'm not Mario Brothers U sorry uh, the new Super Mario Brothers on the Wii, and I played them on the 3D. Uh, sorry, the DS, and I played them on the 3DS. And they go from strength to strength. They're still fantastic, you know. Um, so all credit to Mario for that, you know, and Nintendo for that. Sorry, um, you know. But like Crash Bandicoot, they ruined it. You know, it, it was like Earthworm Jim. They released Earthworm Jim HD. Sorry, not HD, sorry, Earthworm Jim 3D. Sorry, HD was amazing. Uh, 3D, you know, and it was like Bubsy 3D as well. Ugh. It was like, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and they took Crash Bandicoot too far, and I can say the Ratchet and Clank games, I don't know enough about them to kind of, you know, know. I, I hear that, you know, people don't talk about them as fondly as they did on the PS2. You know. I think um, realism killed the platformer. Yeah, well, it's like Mike said, you know, you, you look at kind of games like Assassin's Creed and stuff and you think, yeah, have they killed platforming? But I still think there's a there's a fondness. I mean, you go in game shops and you see kids playing like with Nintendo Wii's and they're looking at, you know, and they're like simple games. You know, you, you see kids getting a Wii and you're like, that's great to see a child playing a Nintendo Wii still because it shows that they, you know... Not every child plays Call of Duty or FIFA, you know. Some kids still play 
you know, on the Wii, and even if it's the, the crappy third party games that, you know, that like that kind of play connect as well. It was like kids still enjoy that, and that's why the platforming genre, I think overall, yeah, it should come back if done well, like Mike said. Yeah, like I say, I think like you said, there is a market there. Like I said, if it's done right, if it isn't just a rehash of old games and all these HD remakes and stuff, and I think it needs fresh yeah. ideas. So you don't agree with the HD remakes? It's not that I don't agree with them. I think that studios seem to be getting too dependent on them. Rather than mm. concentrating on coming up with new IPs and fresh ideas, it's let's just bring out a HD remake of of this and of that. And it's... Supposedly, there's... Well, Google and Crash Bandicoot, it says that Sony's tried to buy it. Tried mm-hmm. to buy it? Yeah. Was it an arty dog? Yeah. Yeah. It says uh, Activision's looking at ways of exploring the Crash Bandicoot franchise, but all other places. Gone. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot of duty. Yes. <laughs> Well, saying that, though, to be fair, it's not a bad idea, because you remember Conker's Bad Fur Day? Yeah. That was a... That was amazing. And Fur Fighters on the Dreamcast. Never played that one. That was all right. It's fun for a short while. Um, no, Crush... You know, I mean, what what is it about HD remakes you don't like? Like, I'm looking forward to trying this new uh, Abe's Odyssey HD that's coming out. It's not that I dislike them. It's just that we see so many sequels and rehashes and HD remakes. I'd like to see more fresh IPs. Yeah. But, you know, that's kind of... The thing is, though, I know, you know, I think, like, these HD remakes are giving, you know, us a chance to relive them and also giving the kids of today a chance to kind of see appreciate what games you know we enjoyed as a child because as children sorry because you know it's like you see kids these days and they're so ignorant some of them some are and go i hear kids making conversations going you know like in game shops or whatever and they go oh i don't like it it's got crap graphics (laughs) you know and it's like well yeah that's why hd remakes exist because then they can look at it and go you know what, yeah, you know, that actually looks pretty good. Um, obviously, fresh IPs would be great, you know, I'd, I'd, yeah, but so would I'm you serious. say it's full retail, or uh, would you, do you think just on, on arcades, like arcade, like, you know, Xbox, Xbox Live Arcade and, and PSN? Oh, well, I think there could be full retail as long as the full retail isn't the £60 mark or the £50 mark or something like that. Mm. And see, I understand what you're saying about the, you know, bringing them out in HD graphics so people can see or, you know, they can get a taste of these classic games with decent graphics because a lot of people, like you said, say, well, the graphics look shit. Uh, I mean, myself, I'm more of the opinion that gameplay is more important than graphics. Yeah, definitely. You know, you look at Fez. Um... <laughs> what are you scoffing at, Liam? <laughs> no, no, nothing, nothing. I have no. No, go on. on. I you can't... can't do that. No, no, no. I, I can't. I can't have you sitting at the back of the class. Go on. <laughs> you sat there. You know. You, you, no, no. Come on, boy. Share it my, with the rest of the group. My opinion <laughs> would be too offensive, and it would cause a lawsuit. So it's not. <laughs> yeah, but you don't like Fez because you're not a fan of Phil Fish. Well, the last podcast where somebody slagged him off, it, it caused a big hoo ha, so we don't want that. <laughs> we didn't get sued by him. No. And obviously, but like, and I was... obviously, Mike has that disclaimer, so go on. Basically, Phil Fish is a bit rebellious, so I, I don't, so I, like I, don't I don't condone his game. But he's I, not I... in the game. The game, yeah. the game isn't <laughs> Phil Fish. You don't play the sprite of Phil Fish jumping <laughs> on goo bars. I'm very judgmental. <laughs> that's, I mean, like, that's like saying I don't like Don Matrick, but 
I own a connect, you know. I think Don Matrick seems a bit like he seems a bit fucking full of himself, but what's the other still... guy called at Microsoft? Uh, Phil Spencer, is it? No, the one that went to Buggy's house. Major Nelson. That's the one. Yeah, he's a good. Yeah, Major Nelson seems cool. He seems off his trolley, that guy. Oh, he's off his trolley. That's why he's in charge of like all the, the kind of um, PR end of Xbox. Yeah. They're not going to get somebody sane he's... to do that. Yeah, he loves his kind of. He loves his games and whatnot. He... Major Nelson, you can genuinely see that. You know, he's good at what he does. Yeah, he's the he's I'll the face of Xbox, I suppose you could say. Yeah, you know, he knows what he's talking about. That's the thing. It's like, yeah, he, the thing is, well, you've got to be. It's like you're a WWE fan, right, Liam? And you know, and and a guy you have at the forefront of the company with your mic, you hand it to the Rock because the Rock can talk. And it's like Major Nelson with Microsoft. You know, he can talk. He knows, he, he, when he sells a game, you'll listen. You'll be like, oh, I like when he does these videos where he's promoting it. Um, you know, like if they go to Times Square and they're promoting the Xbox One midnight release or whatever, you'll watch it because you're like, yeah. You know, the guy has got that enthusiasm and, and, and that personality that comes across as, as marketable and, you know, a great spokesperson for the company. I know what you mean. I know what you're saying. Uh, he's, he's, I, I'm sure he's just a bit eccentric. He's just, he just—he seems to bullshit a lot. <laughs> that's, that's what I feel. To be fair, he works for Microsoft. <laughs> I was going to say, that's pretty much his job. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to make them seem friendly and nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the dark side. We yeah. have Connect. Exactly. Um, it works. <laughs> yeah. It can now recognise your fingernails. Sit. <laughs> I tell you, I like as well. Who doesn't get enough credit for Microsoft? Or um, AC Bongos. You don't see it. Well, I haven't seen as much of him recently as you used to. Yeah. When back in the early days of Xbox Live, he was everywhere. Yeah, Graham Boyd. Yeah, he was. Um, he was. He was there alongside kind of uh, Dan and Andy. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Andy's gone to do... Sorry, Dan's uh, gone to do Explosive Alan. Um, and Andy's... Uh, Andy works kind of... He's more... Uh, is it outside Xbox? Outside Xbox, Xbox, yeah, with... Um, yeah, with Jane. Yeah, Jane Douglas. Yeah, I used to love sent you a message. <laughs> <laughs> sent you a message, though, reminded me. If you don't like games magazines these days, you look at a games magazine, it'll go exclusive GTA 5 info or whatever... And then you'd be like, well, IGN had that a month ago. Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no exclusives now on the internet. No. Well, well, that's what I mean, like, when you get the news in a magazine. Like when, before the internet kind of was, was popular and, and, and nearly every home in the bloody world had it, you know, it was like you had to use games magazines for your info. But now it's so out of date by the time it's come out. And it's like, sent you a message was like that. It was so funny, but the questions people had were like, you know, you get a question, it'd be like, when's, I don't know, Gears of War 3 out? And Gears of War 3 had already <laughs> been out a month or, you know, or, or the release the release info had been out about a month or so, uh, you know, beforehand on the line. Um, you know, that sent you a message was always great. I just love the haunted Watch typewriter that. at the end. Yeah. I'm hoping that's button mashing you're doing at the other end there, Liam. Of course it is. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> don't worry, I'm, I'm not fapping it away. It's okay. <laughs> at the thought of AC Bongos. still sit tones. <laughs> <laughs> it's saving and ringing babe station after, basically. It's free. You've got video chat on. He's just gutted you can't see your face right now. He's using the PlayStation camera. <laughs> streaming it live <laughs> on Twitch yeah well, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be the Twitch. first <laughs> <laughs> oh the podcast just went into a really awkward place <laughs> let's just say I'm playing a game with very sweaty men hmm 
you're actually playing it with sweaty men next year or <laughs> in the game what are you playing rocky huh? rocky rocky on xbox oh god have you seen the game glitches video the angry video game yeah where yeah, his, uh, his head warps into the turn muffler or the ring post. Yeah, and he sinks into and he keeps sinking into the, the mat, yeah, etc. I love that. Um, yeah, we usually kind of do a feature now on, on, on the podcast where we talk about uh, YouTube kind of, uh, shows that we've been watching. Um, well, you, you call it a feature. I call it when we've run out of stuff to talk about video games. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make us sound more professional here, Michael. Nah. <laughs> yeah, that'll never happen. Nah. Um, is there anybody on YouTube you like watching, Liam? Uh, we came across one the other day on the Sticky Paddle, uh, Creepy Gaming. Came across a Sticky Paddle. <laughs> <laughs> you are just filthy. <laughs> um, the Sticky Paddle, go on, do tell. Uh, it goes through all these games that are creepy and they've got like a myth behind it and a story sort of thing. So like the there's one with the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask and it was a haunted cartridge. Oh. It, it talks about that and stuff. Oh, I'll give that a watch after. Um, we're watching a lot of that Man vs. Food actually on uh, YouTube. All the episodes are on there. Such a great show. Have you ever seen it? I love that show. Yeah, he's like, he just not. How is he not dead? How is Adam not dead yet? A lot of, have you noticed on the late his uh, latest TV shows, he doesn't actually do the challenges anymore? No, he does. Man, is it Man vs. Food Nation? Yeah, where he gets somebody else to do it for him. Yeah, it's probably because his body can't take it. <laughs> oh. Have you watched it, Liam? Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. How is he not dead? I envy the kind of food he gets to eat. It looks so nice. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. It's like, you kind of look at it. It's like, if you went, uh, obviously, if you saw that in front of you, your pride would take over and you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like it says, that, that food just looks delicious. So greasy and, oh, yeah. Proper food. To him more. I mean, what? I say it's proper food. Yeah. Oh, too right. Yeah, you know, it's like you go to a restaurant and you pay... 80 quid for what? Like, I don't know, for it to be like a couple of slices of melon and an avocado and a leaf on top of it with some drizzled <laughs> over the top just for the presentation. <laughs> nah, there's a fat burger from Kebab House. Yeah. Well, that's proper food. A burger with a bit of donna meat on top of it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Onion rings in the middle and oh, yeah, you kind of, oh, you make you want that. But yeah, fair play to him, you know. I mean, that is a real man. Adam Richman, you are the man. He is, uh, you know, the fact that he can take on them challenges um, and he can beat most of them, that's the thing. You know, he's... <sighs> See, it's more the, well, they do it. the, the uh, spice challenges he does that gets me. Yeah. You just see and he's like, it even hurts talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You just see his face just sweating, yeah. And he's like only on to like his second course or something. Like lips are just on fire. Yeah. Uh, he's, you know, there's nothing that I don't, I, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't go out on a night, you know, you couldn't go to like a kebab base with him because he just, it'd be like, what you've got would pale in comparison. <laughs> well, um, on, on that note, you're starting to make me hungry, so I'm thinking <laughs> we should wrap this podcast up. Oh. Aww. I'm glad you said that I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you want to get a pizza. Um, in my tea. Uh, yeah, but obviously I've uh, enjoyed this podcast again, and uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, Alex had to leave uh, due to obviously a bad internet connection. Um, so he will be with us next time, uh, as will, you know, Tegwin, all being well. So uh, obviously I'll hand it over to Mike and Liam to say their goodbyes. Yeah, well, uh, thank you all for watching, listening, and, uh, well, I'm assuming you're listening, and if you stayed to the end, congratulations. Uh, yeah. 
please uh, don't forget to check out the content we get on the site. We get stuff up there as often as we can. And like Marty was saying earlier on, don't forget to check out uh, Destination Gamers podcast. Okay. After I was though. After hours, yeah, Initially, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't kind of pause it or nah, turn us nah. off and listen to that, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, feel free to check out the site. Please feel free to comment if you have any suggestions for, you know, subjects for the next podcast or if there's anything you want to see on the site, please let us know. Always happy to oblige. And, once again, thank you for me and goodbye. Liam? And that's a bye from me. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, cheers. Uh, much appreciated. Um, I've got to get used to that new uh, blogger. Uh, I've been having a bit of a play around with it, um, you know, and uh, hopefully we're going to be up on iTunes. When will that happen, Mike? Uh, when I can get around to doing it. <laughs> um, I'll, I'm not making any promises yet, but I will get around to getting that sorted as soon as. Uh, yeah, no problems. All right, well, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for uh, the chat. Uh, cheers for watching and listening. And before we go, uh, keep an eye out for Crazy Horse Quest for a Bargain Season 2. We'll be coming soon. Oh, brilliant. And uh, if you've got any donations you want to make or any recommendations or anything, feel free to send them us. You know, Mike and Liam especially, you'd appreciate that. Just messages on Twitter first. Yeah, don't be yeah. sending random parcels in the post. <laughs> Especially ones that are ticking. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, goodbye for me. Cheers. Goodbye again. for me. Bye bye. See you all later. Uh, see ya.